Welcome to the third installment of SQL Server Walk and Talks. I am out at Jefferson Patterson Park down in Southern Maryland, Calvert County, down about where I live actually. This is just a few miles from my house. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to come on out here and talk about RPO because it deals with history. And this is a historical park. Well, it's not a historical park, it's a park, but it's got some great history here. In fact, they got one real cool thing I want to show you. We'll go over there and we'll talk about RPO right after the cut. Okay, so I'm at Jefferson Patterson Park and I'm in their Indian village. Now, it is a Native American village, but they called it Indian village, so I'm going to call it the same thing. But this is really cool because they came here and they rebuilt this to a point in time, what it was like and, and in this area around the Chesapeake Bay. It was really, really, really neat. Uh, you can see some of the buildings here in the background that they got fire pits in them and uh, you got little campfire areas, the cooking racks, the drying racks, all that. You even have this cool little totem that was made here. Look at that. How, how cool is that? Anyhow, check out the link below. Come on out to here. But let's talk about RPO, Recovery Point Objective, and what that is. Well, what that is, is the point in time we have to recover to. Okay, RTO we discussed before, and RTO deals with the time you can be offline. So your system goes down five minutes ago, you got a 30 minute RTO. That means you still got 25 minutes to get everything back up and running again. Now, the problem you can run into with that is when you look at your RPO, how much data can you lose? You may be allowed to lose some data, five minutes, 15. You may be able to lose up to a half hour. Sometimes, I've even been places where they just said, we load everything the night before, like a data warehouse environment, 24 hours is fine. If we don't get the stuff in for 24 hours, we're okay. That is a very, very rare occurrence. But regardless of it being rare or not, the point of the recovery point objective is basically to cover how much data can you lose. Okay, so before we said how much time can you lose, productive time, that kind of a thing. Now we're talking about data. So let's talk RPO specifically now. Let's talk about the point in time to recover to. Now, depending on what you've got, if you've got a half hour recovery uh, point objective, that means you're gonna have to have some kind of backup strategy in place in case there's a disaster that you can only lose up to a half hour worth of data. But then take into account your RTO as well, because now you're talking about, okay, I can lose a half hour of productivity time, but I can only lose a half hour of data. Well, the time that they're not working is technically data that could be lost, especially if you're talking a retail system or anything like that, that could have gone offline. You know, you're down for a half hour, who knows what that's gonna wind up costing your business. So let's say you've got this half hour RPO and a half hour RTO, and five minutes ago your system went down. It means you've got 25 minutes to get your act together and get the systems back online, but also, you have to bring the data up as close as you can. Now you can lose up to a half hour, so maybe you can just pull a full differential and a transactional backup, boom, you're done. You're, it takes you 10 minutes to restore, if you're lucky, and, and that's it, you're done, you're good. You lost that bit of time, you lost that bit, but you know what it is. Now if you have a zero time RPO and zero time RTO, it kind of goes with the RTO. Be a consultant and go, yeah, it costs this much to do, and suddenly they go, yeah, we can afford to lose a little bit of time. Uh, we can afford to be down for like half an hour and maybe lose five minutes worth of data. Okay, well this is where you have to know what your recovery models are. Now, I'm going to cover that in another video in more depth, the different types of full differential transactional, plus the different types of file, database, that kind of thing. So we'll definitely cover those in a later video. But what I want you to do is keep in mind the half of the SLA, that is the RPO. So you have the RTO recovery time objective, now you have the RPO, the recovery point. What point in time do we have to be able to restore to? Be it the point of failure, which is when we get tail logs and all that kind of thing involved, or are you okay losing a little bit of time that maybe you can just go and grab the backup, grab your backups, restore it, lose five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe that's okay. Regardless, you get that RTO from before, you get the RPO from this time, put them together, that's how you know what kind of backup strategy you have to come up with, and that's important. Because, again, making backups is fine, but if you can't meet your RTO and RPO requirements, your backups are basically worthless. So here's your task you've got to do now. I want you to go and find out what your RPO is. If you watched our other video, you would have figured out what your RTO is, maybe a half hour downtime. Well, now figure out your RPO. How much data can you lose? Okay. Hopefully you get something at a reasonable number. You're not going to have to freak out. But if it comes down to zero, 
start looking at your backup strategy. Make sure that you can get back to the point of failure. So that's it. I mean, RPO is pretty basic and simple. RTO is pretty basic and simple. Put them together, that gives you your SLA. And your SLA helps define your job as a SQL Server DBA and lets you know what you can do and how you can prepare and lets you plan your recovery strategy and build a backup strategy so you can recover correctly. So, until next time, happy trails.